Today I would like to talk about pangrams, which are sentences that include every letter of the alphabet. And these are kind of an old concept that were used to check out whether a typewriter worked. You could also use it as a quick typing test of a typewriter because it has every character of the alphabet. It of course does not have numbers or punctuation, but it does cover all the common keys. So a pangram, just again, every letter of the alphabet, and the one that we see all the time is this one I'm showing on screen. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And you may have seen this meme before that said, how did the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog become the typical sentence that contains all the letters of the alphabet and not sphinx of black quartz judge my vow, which is objectively a million times cooler. So what I would like to talk about is why we do use the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and not the sphinx one. It's not to do with the fact that one has all the letters and the other doesn't. Uh, they both have all the letters of the alphabet. We'll go through a few other ones that have all the letters of the alphabet too. But for us, we're going to talk about what the purpose of these sentences is for. We don't need to check whether our keyboard works. We don't need to check whether a typewriter works. What we're going to use these for as designers is we end up using these sentences just to check. It's going to give us every letter so we can see what a font looks like. There are some considerations when we think about that. Really, you're actually not going to care. One of the things I started with when I was thinking about this is what's the commonality of the letters of the alphabet? But that doesn't matter. We don't actually care how often a letter is going to show up. But one thing I did realize was going to be important was that the letter pairs are going to be incredibly important. So what I've done is I found the top 25 letter pairs for English. Right, this is standard written English, so it might not be correct for some instances, but we're going to use it today. So it's T H H E A N I N E R N D and so on and so forth. So look through those, and you can see that those are the most common letter pairs. Of course, it's you know it thinks I'm doing something wrong grammatically or spelling, but these are the most common letter pairs. Now, for most of these letter pairs, there's very standard edge interaction because we're looking not only at what do the letters look like in this font, but also what do the letters look like next to each other in this font. And we can see that they have very common edge interactions, right? There's nothing really interesting happening for most of these first few. The first one we get that's interesting is this R and E because we have a negative space that this E is kind of visually going to want to go up into. The next interesting one we have might be this T and the O where the O wants to come into this negative space. The next one is going to be this N and the G right here because this is the first time that we have a descender in one of our pairs. So these are some things that are, in my opinion, the things to think of when we think of these sentences. These sentences are going to show us all of our le letters. We definitely want to know how these common letter pairs are going to work out in whatever font we pick. Another thing that we need to do is develop these sentences for our purposes. There's no sense in using a sentence that somebody else wrote that is for their purpose you want it to be for your purpose. So if you know that you're going to be using a font for a specific set of things, uh, let's say that you do only fashion design. Well, there are words that go with fashion design that don't really go with much else that you might use all the time that need specific letter pairs. So you might as well go ahead and throw those in your pangram sentence so you have a better idea of what your text is going to look like as opposed to just a common set of text. So I'm going to leave this up and I'm going to bring in some other pangram sentences. Again, so far we had the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and we had sphinx of black quartz judge my vow. So I'm going to bring in... These are just in order of how many letters it takes to have all the letters in a single sentence. Now let's look at this first sentence. Waltz bad nymph for quick jigs vex. Now, that is not the way that we use the language that we have, at least not commonly. 
So that's probably not a good version of this thing. And if you look, we're also missing a lot of these common pairs. TH, HE, nowhere in here. Same thing with this one, nowhere in here. Same thing with Sphinx of Black Quartz, Judge My Vow. Look at where you're using some of these things. How often are these pairs happening? The PH pair, the NX pair, we're almost never going to use those. The TZ pair, also extremely rare. So some of these are interesting, they're cool looking, but the pairs that you're using are not going to be correct for common English. Things that are correct are things like QU, right? That's pretty much always the way you're going to use a Q. Very rarely are you going to use a Q without a U after it, so you probably want to keep that common pair. One thing that's an easy way to judge these is that your first two most, com most common pairs are TH and HE. Well with that you get one word that includes all three of those letters in these pair orders and that word is the, T-H-E. So that's an easy way to get that set of initial pairs in here. We also probably want these to be represented as much as possible. If you can't get them, of course that's fine because you might have other uses. So things like these really small ones that are quote unquote cool sounding um, are not actually not as useful because they don't show commonality. Like Zephyrs, you can see that Zephyrs is used twice in the top five. That's not a common word and it's not a common combination of letters either, so it's not going to do what we need it to do as designers. Because remember, we're not using this to check a keyboard, we're just using this most of the time to look and see if a font looks right. So we don't need these really concise sentences, we can use slightly longer sentences or multiple sentences to give us an idea of what our font looks like in our niche need. We can look at the five boxing wizards jump quickly. This is actually pretty good. The word the is in there, right? That takes care of, of these two right here. We don't have the an, but we, we do have an ar right there, which is very common, which has also the same shape most of the time, right? An a and an r next to each other. It's gonna look very similar to an a and an n look next to each other in the same orientation. So that actually works very well. We have our qu that we're used to. Five is common word. None of these words are really strange. The one arrangement that's going to be strange in this sentence is the W-I-Z of wizards because it gives you, let me make this a little bigger so we can see it. The W-I-Z is going to be an issue because you have the negative space under the W you have the very small, thin character of the I, and then you have the facing negative space of this Z. So you get a trapezoidal negative space in here that's going to read and look differently than a lot of the ways that either a W or a Z are going to be used. So that is a little bit peculiar, but otherwise most of this is pretty standard. Jump, standard word, quickly, standard word. A thing that this sentence doesn't have is two characters that go up to your capital line, so like two T's or an FT or something like that. And it does not have two characters that have descenders next to each other. We don't have two descenders next to each other up here. We also do not have two T's or an FT up here. But that might be something that we want to put in just to see how that font handles that sort of organization. So maybe we want to have an FT or a TT in our list. We might want something like a GY because the way that these descenders look together and the way that these taller characters look together, that's going to be important for how our overall font works. Now it doesn't of course have to be a GY, it's just anything with two descenders next to each other. I'm going to skip number seven and come down to our favorite, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This does a pretty good job of a lot of the things that I've been discussing. The quick 
the, we have the, Q and U is correct together. We have pretty common combinations here. Our X is used in a way that's very common. OX is common. We have Fox, we have Box, we have Boxing, all those things. The other way that X is used are the Fax in here, X. That combination will happen. We Our Z is used in a common way. We don't, we're not doing something crazy with our Z, like quartz. Right? We're doing something very normal with our Z, which is a ZY combination, which is lazy, hazy, all those things. This shape, while odd, is going to come up every once in a while. So that's okay. The other thing that we would have as a pair might be a Z and an E. But the Z and Y and Z and E look fine. We do not have two descenders or two ascenders together in this sentence. So I'm not the biggest fan. We're still missing out. But it does most of the things of being common. Common words are so important. So many of these are crazy and weird. They're cool, don't get me wrong, they are neat, but they're just weird. What I would like to do now is make my own. I'm going to make my own pangram. And just in case pangram is spelled like that, so we're going to make our own pangrams. I'm going to leave these up. And I'm going to start working up here. So I'm going to make a pangram for the art department, for because a lot of the design work I do is just making you know stuff for the art department or making little posters for art classes and things like that. So I'm going to have a common set of words. So I'm going to have a common set of words that are used within the arts that I might want to use, even if they don't take up all my letters. I know that there are some common combinations and some common words. So I definitely want to do the common stuff first. I'm just going to go ahead and say I want the word the somewhere in there. I'm definitely going to want the word art. And I may want the word art with a capital A to see how the capital A works. We haven't talked about capitals yet. That's something that if you know something is going to be capitalized all the time, go ahead and just use it as a capitalized thing. So if you're designing uh, stuff for Coca-Cola, well you know that that word is going to be capitalized, so you need to see how the C and O look next to each other as a capital C and a lowercase o. So I might do art and artistic, something like that. This is also a weird one with this T-I-S-T-I. This is an odd combination in here. We can also see that this R and T combination is different than a lot of other things because we have the top part of our R coming into the crossbar of the T and that can look a little odd in some fonts including the one we're looking at right now. So I might do that, but we're using and we're repeating things, so we might, how about let's do artist instead of artistic. That might keep a few less letters in there, but still give us the shape and organization that we're looking for. What else? We can actually use our PH as a PH because we can do graphic. That might be a word that we want to include. Because we are at ASU, I'm going to want to check that AS and U look good as capital letters all together. I'm never going to use this as a lowercase, so I don't need to worry about that. Our building has some interesting things. We have the Tullabody building, so that might be a good option. It also gives us some common words, like body gives us a double L, which has the two ascenders, but it doesn't really show me how the crossbars are going to meet. So that's kind of good, but not excellent. For our Q, I think sequential, I like sequential art, like doing cartoons might be a good one. This also gives us the Q-U-E, which is reasonably common. It also gives us another T-I. So maybe we don't need this one right here, but we'll look and see. 
maybe web or web design for that. We'll see if that gets us our W. Now the use of uncommon letters like X and Z. Maybe flex. Lazy is a nice one because it does have that ZY that's relatively common. Hazy might also be a good one for that. So let's see if... Right, you could also do crazy. And that looks okay. And we do not have a CR next to each other anywhere else. So that might actually be a better version for this. Right, let's see, we have A, B, C, so we still need a J. Okay. Another nice thing about this crazy is that it does eat up both your Z and your Y. So these are the four letters it looks like we're missing. So I need to find something that's, uh, that uses the J and the K, and an M and a V. The M is a strange one. Just strange in that we haven't already used it. So we could do something like move. Would eat up these two. We could do joke to use these. Now I'm still missing the, this combination here. These two sets of combinations and I do want to get those in here. So let's think about what words might be useful. I could do attentive, that would be, you know, student-oriented, attentive. That does use my V, so now I might be able to use my M in something shorter. I could do something like am. Now the question is, can we make... Oh, we still need our double lowers. Maybe we could add KG. A word like this that include like poppy, that includes a bunch of these bowls in series, can also be interesting, just because it does give you this sort of um, repetitive feeling. This also takes care of some of our descenders, so we could drop out KG. All right, now let's think about how to put this in a sentence. Okay, so that uses all of our letters in a sentence. And if you've noticed, I've also added in comma, apostrophe, dash, question mark, simply because it gives me an idea of what those characters look like. Those are some common punctuations, and they are things that I'm going to want to see how a font han um, handles. One thing I could also do, because it is used so commonly in social media, is I could put an at there. I could start it with the at symbol, right, because that's the way a lot of these names are, at name. I could see how that at symbol looks, because a lot of fonts have a very sketchy looking at symbol, and I might want to know that that symbol is not quite right. If you have specific punctuation you're going to use all the time, like if, if you work for accountants and what percentage, the little percentage mark is going to be the right thing all the time, you need to know that that looks right. If you're going to be doing a book about, about writing code, where the difference between a parentheses and uh, curly braces and braces are all different, you want to make sure that those, bra that those things all look different, right? I want to make sure that 
this, this, and this are all very visually different and also look good. But it's only if I'm doing it for code. It wouldn't make sense for me writing about the arts. If I do text for food, I'm going to have different words than these ones. We have our two ascenders without crosses. We have our two ascenders with crosses. We have our descenders here. And then we have every letter in here. So we can use this to check fonts. Go to something crazy and let's look at this. And our at looks okay. Our two crosses look okay. Our lower cases work together okay. Our run of bowls here in the word poppy looks okay. Our Q looks fine. This ASU looks okay, it's not great. Our apostrophe S actually looks pretty trash. Right, we can see that this is gonna be a problem here, and this is something that we're going to need to deal with. Our dash here looks fine, and all of our individual characters look pretty good. So that's something that we can look at, is we can immediately pick out where our problems are gonna be, and then we can decide that maybe this font's not for us, or maybe this font, I really like it, so maybe I just know that I'm gonna come in and pull this S across for every time that it that it happens. I'm just going to kern that in. Let's try another font and look through it. So I can immediately see that that at symbol is trash compared to the rest of this. It just doesn't work at all with the rest of the font. So I might have to either find another at symbol, I might have to make one, or maybe this font doesn't work if I know I'm gonna to have to have at symbols. We can look through our our ascenders look good, our ascenders with crossbars look good together. We can look, our dash looks good, our apostrophe S actually looks pretty good. I can see that there's a little bit of issue where the word spacing is not quite enough, and I might want to bump up my word spacing because places like this get kind of hard to read. My four bowls in a row work well. My question mark looks just fine, looks normal. Of course, there's gonna be more fonts than this in most sets. I'm just using this because it's easiest for everybody to play along. Our at symbol looks fine. Now this, all of the characters come up to the ascender line. We come all the way up to cap height. And because of that, it's going to do things differently. For example, these ascender Ls, they're all caps now. The T's, same thing, they're caps. Our E's are lowercase. What else is lowercase? That's pretty much it. We, we've lost our descenders. Our O has come up in our line. See the O and the poppy right here? We, we can look that these P's actually don't go below the, bot the, the baseline, they're not descenders in the true sense, they pop the O up to give it that look. So this is an interesting font, it might work for what you want, it might not, but with this sentence we can look and see at all the different interactions and ways that thing things are going to work and kind of how, how it's going to work for our purposes. So I can see that this section here where this Y and the, the Y dash J, that works less well aesthetically than say this one right here, which actually is pretty clean, right? That's a pretty attractive version of that thing. So we can use this sentence to cover my use case. Your use case is going to be different and you need to come up with a sentence or sentences that do what you need them to do for your purposes. You know the language that you use. If When you start working for another company, it'll be very easy to look through and just kind of see what language they use, what words are very common, in what instances do you need to use all caps or capitalization that may not be appropriate, right? Like I left art capitalized in the middle of a sentence. That's completely wrong, but it's okay because I know I'm gonna need to use capital a art in a lot of sentences doesn't make sense for this but it'll be okay so when I was working on this I didn't do this out of my mind I had one of our little recruitment brochures right next to each other and I just looked for common or strange words that 
might have weird letter combinations. Like, you might want to say, oh, well, at Alabama State, you might want to use those words. Right? You might want to use these words. But you can look that the interaction of these letters is neither interesting nor complex. Right? It doesn't do anything, it doesn't show me anything, so I don't need to use these words because I know that they're going to be pretty standard. I thought about it and then like, knocked them out. So do realize that some words that might seem important aren't, not because the word isn't important, but because those letter combinations don't show you something that other letter combinations might show you more interesting problems. All right, I hope this was informative and I hope you can make your own pangrams now that do what you need for your purpose. Remember, we build our tools, we work with our tools to serve us. There is no sense in using somebody else's tool when it's so quick and relatively easy to develop your own that's going to be fun and that's going to be much more useful for you. Right? Compared to this writing art copy, is going to be so much better using this sentence than using the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog or worse, sphinx of black quartz judge my vow, which is a terrible pangram.